Welcome to Sankofa Pan African series. Please support us through Patreon and by buying me coffee. Don't just subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notification button, share our videos, and check out our website, sankofastorybooks.com, for history, Afrocentric stories, and other resources for children. Roland Hauslin, who was born to parents who were part of the Windrush generation, is one of the co-founders of Justice for Windrush Generation, JFWG, which he started with a Garrick Prayog to raise public awareness about the Windrush Compensation Scheme. Roland will be talking to us today about the Justice for Windrush Generation and the Windrush Compensation Scheme. Welcome to Sankofa Pan-African series, Errol and Howley. Mm -hmm. uh, please, can you remind our viewers what the Windrush generation means? Yes. Windrush generation, after the um, Second World War, um, well, Britain was a lot of bombings throughout the UK, throughout Britain, um, during the Second World War. So um, buildings were flattened and so on. After the Second World War, um, people from the um, Caribbean were invited to come to the UK and um, help to rebuild back the UK, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So 1948, one of the first ships that came was a ship called the Windrush. Okay. That's why you hear the, you, you hear the term um, Windrush generation. So they came here between 1948 uh, and 1973, 1st of January, 1973. That's the Windrush generation, really. Okay. And they came, as I said, specifically to rebuild the UK. Um, so that's the Windrush generation there. Okay, thank you very much. Now, so please tell us a bit about yourself, um, because I know your personal history is yeah. quite tied to the uh, story of the Windrush generation. Mm -hmm. My father, my mother came here in 1959. My father came 1960. My older brother was born in 66. I was born 68. In 73, the family went to Jamaica. My mother, father, myself, and my older brother went to Jamaica 73. From about 74 going, um, 74 going 75, they wanted to return to the UK. Well, we wanted to return to the UK. But when my father and mother approached the British High Commission in Jamaica, they were told that Jamaica had got independence now, and as a result, they can't just return to the UK like that. They would have to come back to the UK or return to the UK as um, visitors. Mm. Right? They went a number of times after that, they went to the High Commission. By then, they had a numerous reasons why they wanted to come back to the UK. Their political violence, etc., in Jamaica. Um, so they had good reason to return to the UK. In fact, one but of you us and your past. brother, but you and your brother were born in the UK. That's did correct. That yes. Make you British citizens. Yes, Whether it did make. Whether Jamaica part. was independence, that automatically should have made you at that time citizens of uh, of the UK. That's correct. They were, we were citizens. We were British citizens. However, because our parents were not allowed to come back because of the hostile environment, i.e. the attitude of the British High Commission in Jamaica. We were children, so we could not return to the UK. We could not look after ourselves. So we had to wait until we were adults, old mm -hmm. enough to look after ourselves. So as a result of that, my brother and I, I was born nearly 20 years old. My brother was born 21, 22 years old. So we returned then. We could not have returned any earlier because, as I said before, we were we could not look after ourselves. So the hostility from the British High Commission towards my brother and myself, towards, towards sorry, towards our parents, oh. impacted my brother and myself. Oh. And that situation is not unique to 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 my brother and, and, and myself. We had other there are other instances where similar things happened too other people that were born in the UK and were not allowed to return to the UK, just like my brother and myself. 
not only in Jamaica. People from other parts of the Commonwealth. Who... Other parts of the Commonwealth as well. Okay. Nigeria, Ghana, okay. etc. Straight right across the Commonwealth. In fact, not only across the Commonwealth, okay. right across the world, because some of them left and they went to Canada, mm. they went to the USA, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But mm. when Ghana, Nigeria, and all these other Commonwealth countries, when they gained independence, there was a hostility that they experienced at the um, British High Commission throughout the world, from Jamaica, Barbados, Nigeria, right across the Commonwealth and elsewhere. And the attitude of the British High Commission, mm -hmm. the British authority then is that you said you wanted independence, you have now got independence, go away, we do not want to deal with you. That was the attitude. And that's what, that what led, led to um, those issues that those Interviews that were born here are came to the UK from the Commonwealth country, from Commonwealth countries, left and wanted to return. Okay, thank you. And um, I know that uh, you and a group of others like uh, uh, Eric uh, Prehog, yeah, now formed an organization called Justice for Windrush Generation. Mm -hmm. So, why exactly did you start this organization? And um, yeah, and what does the organization do? Justice for Winters Generation, uh, we've got two primary aims. One is to promote the Windrush Compensation Scheme, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. I'll talk to you about the Windrush Compensation Scheme. And two is to campaign, to get changes to the scheme. Because as the scheme is at the moment, it's not for your purpose. The scheme, the Windrush Compensation Scheme, was set up to compensate those and, and put, have some sort of restorative justice for those that were impacted by the hostile environment of the Home Office towards the Windrush Generation and their descendants. Now, I've explained earlier about who are the Windrush Generation, those who came from those Commonwealth countries, who came from the Caribbean primarily, the descendants like myself that were born here, you know, the children and the grandchildren, those are the descendants of the Windrush generation. Now, justice for Windrush generation and the compensation scheme. Because of this hostility towards the Windrush compensation and Windrush generation, in 2018, there was an article that went out and parliament, etc., the community at large, citizens at large in, in, in the UK, get a better understanding of this hostility that the Windrush generation were experiencing and the descendants were experiencing. And as a result of that, in 2018, a compensation scheme was set up by the UK government, the Home Office, to compensate the individual. But as the scheme is a, there is a misconception, so to speak, that scheme is key is for Jamaican and those individuals from the Caribbean, which is not correct. So we set up the Justice for Winters Generation, started a campaign to reach out there primarily to those that are outside the UK, whether they are in, the, in Jamaica, other parts of the Caribbean, or the continent, Africa. So at the moment, we are putting out special effort to promote the scheme across the continent and the diaspora, the African continent, and the African diaspora to reach out to those individuals from Sierra Leone, Zimbabwe, right across, Nigeria, et cetera, et cetera, because we know they are individuals that are impacted there. Exactly, okay. if you can tell us in a, in a nutshell, yeah. who is entitled you know, to, to the compensation under this? Uh, okay, yeah. Yes. Those entitled to come to the compensation scheme are as follows. If you came to the UK from a Commonwealth country before the 1st of January 1973, between 1948, well, before you came to the UK before the 1st of January 1973, from a yeah. common, you came from a Commonwealth country. That's one. Two, yeah. if you came to the UK before the 1st of January 1989, and you are under the age of 18 years old. And thirdly, if you are born in the UK and your parent and our grandparent came from a Commonwealth country. So they are those individuals that were born in the UK 
and they can apply to the scheme if they have got ties to a commonwealth country being their, their parent or grandparent. There's another category of individuals that can apply. Those who came to the UK from any country, doesn't have to be a commonwealth country. And, sorry, who came to the UK before the 1st of January, 1989, from any country, and you were on the age of 18 years old. So you got, you got to the UK before the 1st of January, and you were younger than 18 years old. You too can make an application to the scheme. Doesn't matter where, what part of the world you're from. Okay, so I need to be clear on that. So there are a number of categories there. Mm. Now, um, go ahead, you're gonna ask a question. Yeah, so what exactly does your organization do um, yeah. to help people access uh, their compensation? I know you guys have some maybe regular uh, meetings Don't and meet. things like that to right. educate people. Can you right, so we got, we got two meetings that we, two meetings at the host. One is called the Windrush Compensation Scheme Sunday chat. It's an informal chat, make as informal um, as possible. However, it is very informative. It's like a family chat, yeah, the Sunday chat, evening chat or whatever, where we sit, we, where we discuss the scheme. That particular um, Zoom chat is held on the second and last Sunday of each month at 2 p.m. British summertime, or GMT, um, GMT a few weeks ago, we now British summertime, so it's 2 p.m. Second and last Sunday of each month, British summertime. With that, we discuss the different elements and the different categories of the scheme. Who is eligible to apply to the scheme, like your, your primary claimant, your close family member, your deceased estate, and so on, uh, making an application on the, the deceit, deceased estate category of the scheme because they are those individuals that are deceased that were their lives were impacted in various ways whether they could not um, get employment or because of well in order to be entitled it's eligibility and then there's entitlement and you need to explain the two before going further eligibility is when you fit into those categories that have to be first of january 1973 First of January 1989, as I've explained before, and coming from a Commonwealth country, I may come from any other country, um, and you were under the age of 18 years old before the 1st of January 1973, and that, sorry, 1989. That is eligibility. Entitlement, in order to be entitled to compensation, your life would have had to be impacted because of your inability to prove your legal status in the UK. So let me give you an example of that one. Let's say you came from Nigeria, you had to definitely remain in a passport, which gives you the right to work in the UK. You had one job, you lost that job or the company went bankrupt or whatever. So you applied for a second job. When you applied for the second job, at the interview, employer said, yes, we will employ you. However, we need to check that you've got the right to work into the work in the UK. So the employer would get in touch with the home office, and the home office may have said to the home office who would tell you, tell the employer whether or not this particular individual has got the right to work in the UK. So the individual, the, the employer got in touch with the home office. The home office may have give, given them incorrect information. They have said, you're not allowed, this individual is not allowed to work in the UK. This individual is not allowed to work in the UK when the individual was actually allowed to work in the UK. That would have been incorrect information. Mm -hmm. Likewise, they, that in the particular individual may have gone to use the NHS for given similar uh, misleading information or may apply for a grant to go to um, college or university. It wants to open a bank account, may have had issues. They, they, that particular individual may not have, do not need to have gone through all those be impacted by all those individual situations as long as they have been impacted by one of those situations. Another one, another example again, that individual that came from Ghana may have gone to get married in Ghana, bury a family member, whatever, whatever reason. And on their return, when they get to the airport in Nigeria or Ghana, they may have been told that 
they're not allowed to return to the UK or that individual may have lost the passport while uh, in, in Ghana, Nigeria, wherever, and went to the High Commission there and said, I need some assistance. I've lost my passport. I need to get, I've got another passport. I need to get back to the UK. I've got indefinite leave to remain, et cetera, et cetera. And the High Commission did not believe them. Consequently, that individual stayed 10, 12 months or even longer in Nigeria or wherever, other parts of the world as well. Or on the way back to the UK, when they get in the UK, they may have been detained at the airport. Detained does not mean that you were locked in a room or anything like that, but your passport was taken, you were delayed while they make inquiries. The immigration officers make inquiries and to establish that you've got the right to be return to be living in the UK or return to the UK. And they may not believe what you've told them, that the indefinite leave to remain that you've got in the passport is genuine or whatever, as long as you were delayed at the airport, right, for more than half an hour, then you're, in, you're eligible to make a claim. And maybe I entitled, I should be entitled to compensation. Though that list I gave you is not exhaustive. That's, those are just indications. So as long as you've got issues, so to speak, your life was impacted because of your inability to prove your legal status in the UK, then that's when you would be entitled to compensation. Okay. So there's eligibility, and told about 1973, 1989, et cetera, et cetera, that particular time period, and I'll explain to you what entitlement is. So we need to know the difference between eligibility, give it a right to apply to the scheme, and entitlement, what caused you to be entitled to compensation. Thank yeah? you. Thank yeah? you. Okay, so we'll just, uh, so viewers who are watching this, uh, they have more questions. Um, mm -hmm. Our lead assistants, I know that you also run your own uh, personal uh, business where you assist people, yeah. so they can always reach out to you. Can I clarify something here at this point, please? And uh, um, I did mention the ship um, earlier. The wind and the windrush. The windrush is just a ship, but you do not necessarily have to come on the windrush ship, out, so to speak. Yeah. That was one of the first ships that came, but you do not have to come on it. When it came, is what is important. The mode of transportation is not important. So there would be individuals that came and from a Commonwealth country that would have come and shipped, obviously, but there are those that came on plane and by other means as well. So don't believe that you've got to come, uh, um, would have um, came to the UK on a ship. Can be any mode of transportation. What is important is when you came, not how you came, okay? okay. When you right. came, where you came from, that's what's important. Not how you, you, you. you're right. Thank okay, you. so, or, yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Thank you. No, that's it, I think we've covered all the questions we- Right, we so our organization, just because we this generation, if you want to get, let's say you come to the Zoom, we've got the Sunday chat, which is the second and last Sunday of the month. We've also got the African diaspora chat, which we host on the first and last Monday of each month at noon, British Standard Time, UK time. First and last Sunday, sorry, first and third, first and third Sunday of the month. That is the, the, the Monday chat, African diaspora Monday chat. That is aimed specifically at the African diaspora, whether you're on the continent or you're elsewhere in the world. And the reason why we do that, we have that Monday chat at noon, first and second, first and third Monday of each, um, each month, is because at the moment we feel the scheme is very UK centered and that impression that is given or that misconception that the scheme is a Jamaican or a Caribbean scheme, so to speak. So we aim that at right across the continent. From Ethiopia, Ghana, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. you do not necessarily have to live on the continent as long as you are up the African diaspora, where we discuss the scheme in detail, how to apply, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Thanks for watching. Please support us through Patreon and my Buy Me Coffee, so we can continue to bring you this series. Subscribe if you've not yet done so, and please turn on your notification buttons. Don't forget to share our videos with all your contacts and keep those comments coming.